Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. With all of the excitement as AMD's RDNA 3 event gets ever closer, of course, there are a lot more leaks recently. And that is a very intriguing one concerning performance. We'll get into that in just a moment. But I want to give you guys a quick update for the 7900 XT and its specifications. Now, N31 essentially powers two SKUs, at least as far as we know so far. The 7900 XT and also the 7950 XT. The 79 50 XT is basically the flagship, although it's worth noting that technically speaking, they may come in two variants. It's not 100% certain at the moment, but with the way that MCDs work, of course, and regular viewers know this already, the MCDs can basically be stacked, and that means you can have additional infinity cache. So the 96 megabytes of the 7950 XT can basically be doubled to 192. As far as I understand, at least in gaming tests, generally speaking, there isn't a huge difference in performance, but that information could be wrong, and I would be very interested to see what, for example, happens with ray tracing tests. Either way, this brings us to a story of today and the 7900 XT, and this has been posted by WCCF Tech. Of course, I'll leave a link down below. Now, as you can expect, the 7900 XT is basically reducing the specifications, uh, and one of the cuts, of course, would indeed be the number of workgroup processors. So we're seeing 48 of the 7950 XT being cut down to 42. This has actually been posted already by Skyjuice over at Astronomics, and I think I've mentioned it several times myself. But of course, there will also be cuts in the amount of memory and memory bandwidth. And um, WCCF Tech have basically confirmed that we're looking at a cut from 24 gigabytes of memory down to just 20. Honestly, I still think 20 gigabytes is more than sufficient, but it also means that the memory bus will also be cut as well down to 320 bit. Naturally, the Infinity Cache will also see a smidgen of a decrease. I think it's like 80 megabytes if memory serves, and there will only be five MCDs. So it makes sense, honestly. Um, I still think it's essentially the same die. Oh, and by the way, some interesting thing I've been hearing recently, one of the big reasons that N32 is allegedly being delayed, it was supposed to launch earlier this year than what it, uh, sorry, next year than what it seems to be. It seems to have slipped back in schedule, although it's worth noting, of course, AMD haven't confirmed any of this, so... Is it a delay if it was never announced? Either way, I'm hearing that the reason behind all of this, and it's probably not a surprise to many of you, is the 5NM capacity. So not only, of course, is the 5NM being used for Zen 4 CPUs, which, of course, not only a desktop, but upcoming Threadripper, as well as perhaps the most lucrative of all server, but they're also for GPUs as well. Not only for professional usage, like high performance computing, of course, AMD's, you know, server GPUs, but also they're going to be for RDNA 3. And basically, well, you know, something has to give somewhere. I'm going to be very interested to see what the number of GPUs that are available for the 7950 XT and the 7900 XT are at launch. Obviously, the RTX 4090 essentially sold out in seconds. As I've mentioned a couple of times now, I tried to get one on the channel. It just hasn't happened. So, um, who knows? I'm trying. It is what it is. It's kind of annoying because uh, you guys might be able to see there's like a 13900K there. Uh, so, I don't know. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to be doing a build at the moment. So, it is what it is. You know, first world pool problems and all. But what is quite interesting with all of this, of course, is that with the 7900 XT having 20 gigabytes of RAM, that is most likely the same capacity as what we're going to see with the 4080 Ti. Goodness knows when NVIDIA will announce the 4080 Ti. I suspect that there's going to be a lot of reshuffling and changes in NVIDIA's plans as they learn more about what AMD are doing. As of the time I'm recording this, I still don't think even NVIDIA are 100% certain what AMD are planning, and I suspect there's going to be a lot of very interesting announcements at the event. Oh, and while we're actually on the subject, or continuing on the subject of AMD and just random little things, I've also heard from yet another source that FSR3 is real. I can get absolutely no details yet of what FSR3 is. For example, does it work on RDNA 2? Is it exclusive to RDNA 3? Honestly, I just don't know. The reason I've put a little more stock into this is that um, this source actually told me DLSS 3 and also hinted some of the features that did make 
you know, the cut, in other words, the frame generation thing. Unfortunately, because the hints were so ambiguous, I honestly just couldn't tell what the heck he was talking about. <laughs> so it was just like, well, I guess that's just my dumbass not being able to read between the lines. But anyway, um, yeah, FSR 3 is apparently being worked on. Again, there is absolutely no detail, so I wouldn't put too much excitement on it. Honestly, I wouldn't expect it to be announced, you know, at the RDNA 3 event. I'd love to be proven wrong there, but my guess is it's probably going to be some point next year. It's also not too surprising because obviously Intel have XCSS and are continuing to update it. We know they've got a roadmap for that. And well, NVIDIA are doing NVIDIA things with DLSS, so it just makes sense. And continuing actually on the RDNA 3 train for just a moment longer, we're going to hop off and you know, cover other villages in a moment. I want to mention that uh, there is yet another update to the performance targets of RDNA 3, and this is thanks to AGF on Twitter. They've actually had some really good information for the NVIDIA side of things, and they've basically said that the benchmarks for RDNA 3, which apparently show two times performance increase, seem to be from, well, synthetic benchmarks. So gaming performance could be lower. Now, from what I'm hearing, um, Gaming performance is two times, but the problem, of course, is we're, we're dealing with Chinese whispers. We're dealing with, like, first of all, what revision of the hardware is being used. So, for example, is it hitting final clock frequencies? What's going on with the BIOS? That That's not even including things like what resolution, what games, what game engine, what drivers, like, are the drivers boned? I don't know. I'm fairly confident we're going to see a two times increase in raster performance. I could be wrong. I certainly wouldn't put money on it. At this point, honestly, I will literally only believe something. Not uh, Literally, if Lisa Sue emailed me today and I knew 100% it was certain, if she called me, a video call, and I knew it was Lisa Sue 100%, if she flew me to the bloody office and literally showed me the performance numbers, I'm going to be like, cool, that's amazing. I literally will only believe in something when I physically have the damn item at this point. And I think, you know, you know, we've kind of seen what's gone on with the RTX 408012 gigabyte. I made a joke on Twitter the other day that my my old advice was just like, yo, <laughs> believe nothing until you physically, um, you know, is, until there's a physical announcement, believe no rumors. At this point, I don't even believe a product actually launches until it physically is in store shelves. That, of course, I am slightly kidding, but it is getting a little ridiculous, and obviously there are so many rumors at this point. So far, you know, just a quick thing, I think the performance targets are most likely two times raster, with probably a caveat of it going up and down depending on the resolution, and most likely the game engine, you know, that type of stuff. And I suspect it's going to be significantly higher in terms of ray tracing performance. I'm hearing it's still not quite NVIDIA levels, so... I have fairly, I, I am fairly confident in it being significantly better than RDNA 2, but whether it's going to be up to NVIDIA levels, I don't know. I think, basically, if I had to, like, give a win on loss column, I'd probably say raster performance is going to be maybe slightly in AMD's favor, ray tracing in NVIDIA's favor, power consumption in AMD's favor, possibly pricing as well, features probably in NVIDIA's favor, stock god knows because obviously that's a big part of it as well so it's just gonna be very interesting how the market actually responds to all of this and while n31 and rtx 4090s and that type of thing are really cool i'm going to be very interested to see what happens in the lower end skews uh n30 n33 which is i'm assuming going to be the 7700 uh 7700 xt those type of cards it's going to be very interesting to see what amd's strategy is going to be there keeping on the subject of wccf tech for just a moment longer they have also confirmed through their sources, again, I will leave a link down below, that the 3D Vcash processors will launch for Zen 4 at CES. That's when they're going to be announced at the very least. Now, this does match what I've mentioned several times over from what I've been hearing from internal roadmaps. In fact, I actually discussed one a couple of weeks back, I think. So it is good we're hearing additional confirmation about this it's not too surprising the 13900k and other intel cpus are doing really well against amd i'm not going to make a discussion of what which is the better option there is honestly a lot of discussion there of like you know power consumption and all of that stuff and of course it's going to be highly dependent on workload but at least for now anyway it seems that intel do have the gaming crown and there are certain key processes in intel's 13th generation lineup which do very well so ddr4 memory 
and the 13600K in particular looked like a pretty good deal with a cheaper DDR4 uh, board. It seems from what I've read that uh, slower memory doesn't impact performance terribly, especially on the lower end SKUs, which isn't too surprising given there's not a huge number of cores. And um, that matches what I've mentioned a couple of times in terms of my sources. I actually have a 13900K here, which is a review sample that is from Intel as a full disclosure. I haven't actually done any testing on it yet simply because um, basically I'm doing some last minute tests on my 12900K and um, yeah, basically I'm almost certainly going to be doing all of those tests next week. I'm kind of hoping to do some last bits because I'm going to be going on a vacation pretty soon. I'm hoping to be going to Germany for like a week, but that's a slightly different topic. Uh, and yeah, so I think the Vcache processors for Zen 4 are going to be really impressive. Um, my guess, and I say this with complete ignorance, I have not tried the processors. And my guess, though, based upon what my sources have told me anyway, so it's kind of an edumacated guess, I'm guessing it's going to be like t uh, 10 to 20% faster, depending on the SKU and the workload, is what I was told. I think it probably is going to mean that they're going to edge out Intel, but what's going to be the cost of that? I honestly don't know. Um, I do, you know what, to be honest, if you have something along the lines of a 9900K, 10900K, a 5950X, whatever, you obviously are not going to have the same minimum frame rates as, let's say, 7950XT or whatever it ends up being, sorry, 7950X, um, but I think it's more than okay currently for a lot of PC games. Obviously, you know, your mileage will vary. Um, I think a 4090 is going to be quite strenuous on any uh, on any CPU at 4K. So it's going to be very interesting, to be honest, what happens with the market, especially as, of course, we're eventually going to get into the 14th generation Zen 5. And I have a feeling that's going to be a very intriguing generation. And the last thing I do want to mention, actually, is concerning RTX 40, but from a very different context. Um, basically, there has been a leak on Chip Hell. I spotted it on videocards.com, so courtesy to them. And it basically seems to be a cooler which is rated up to 900 watts. Now, firstly, this could be completely fake. It could be, you know, someone's knocked this up at home or whatever. Obviously, I don't know that. But I have been told that most likely it is true, but with an, a massive caveat, I don't think this GPU was ever intended to launch. From what I understand, if it is a real thing, it is almost certainly for test purposes, basically within, well, in, in NVIDIA. And, you know, NVIDIA do all these projects and test things out, and as they're bringing up boards or they're bringing up whatever, Oftentimes, it's never intended to launch. It's either for side projects or it's just because the silicon quality at that point is crap or whatever. And it's like, um, you know, it's like the Titan thing, the whole Titan rumor of melting PSUs. It's just it's just not happening, guys. Like, you know, um, there was no way that they're going to consider launching a card that's like 900 watts, for example. It just It's just not going to happen. Um, and you can kind of see anyway that the RTX 4090, you know, it's 450 watts of all of those rumors that it was like 600 watts. And ultimately speaking, of course, it ended up being a lot less than that from what I'm hearing about the 1490 Ti, 475 watts to like mid 500 watts, like five, I've got two figures basically, 530 and 560. I was told that most likely it's going to be lower. It's probably going to depend, honestly, on what happens with AMD. Obviously, this is not going to be a high-volume card. The whole purpose of a GPU like the 4090 Ti, assume, just for sake of discussion, that it's faster than AMD. The whole purpose of that card is just to give NVIDIA the, you know, that we are faster. And then they're going to just basically trickle volume those cards out, most likely, just to offer enough volume where people can technically buy the card but it's not readily available because obviously you know it's so expensive but they can basically say you know or reviewers are essentially saying oh look this is the fastest offering available and it's nvidia and there's nothing wrong with that i mean amd have done it in previous generations i'm sure when the vcash uh uh, RDNA 3 GPUs launch. It's going to be very interesting, to be honest, what the performance difference is there. Um, but I think that's just about it. I think I've rambled enough in this video. Hopefully, you have enjoyed my rambling. You know what to do. Leave a like on the video if you did. And actually, one last thing. We've now hit um, 99,000 subs. So I just wanted to verbally say thanks for that. <laughs> um, I know that's probably the crappiest thanks in the history of YouTube. I should probably get a reward. I, I, 
Yeah, an award. Jesus, I can't speak. I should probably get an award just for that alone. But like, I don't know. It, it's just, I don't know. Just, it's really weird. <laughs> um, I, uh, I just never really thought the channel was going to take off like this. And it's very humbling and just, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of like emotional and strange. And it's just like, you know, just when people message or email me and I've actually met viewers before, um, either formally because, you know, I've put out calls when I, I was um, visiting like America sometimes because I was, I was dating in America. Um, I think regular viewers probably know that if you've been around for a while, you probably knew that I was dating in America for just over a year. Uh, my ex-girlfriend lived in, um, in Seattle. So I was, you know, met quite a lot of people, a couple of people from Microsoft, um, or well, ex-Microsoft employees and some others, and it was it was really fun, like, you know, like meeting people, and I've met people over here, I've accidentally, when I was in the store or whatever, and it's just, you know, it's amazing getting, like, DMs and emails and, like, just, I don't know, just the fact that anyone watches my content, period. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's, I, I'm being very ineloquent here, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just very, um... I don't know, unexpected, and I just, an owl my neck crunch then. <laughs> oh, this is not going smoothly. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to say, guys. Uh, yeah, just thanks for everything, and thanks for the support. If you're a regular viewer, if you're just watching this video, because and you're like, who the balls is this guy? Or if you're, you know, someone who's been with us day one, all I can say is thank you. Even if you watch, like, every like hundredth video that we upload even if it's just for like a couple of minutes or whatever and you've just got us playing in the background all i can say is thank you for all of the time all of the love you've shown and uh, that's about it anyway enough of the mushy stuff take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now